I was living a stressful life. A typical day looked kind of like this. I'd wake up at 6 a.m. I'd be at work by 7. My first meeting would start at 8 a.m. And then I'd just work my ass all day long till 6 p.m. And I had to sneak out of the office just to get home. I'd get there. I'd make dinner for my family. I'd eventually put the kids to bed. And then I'd break out my laptop. And I'd work sometimes till late as 2 a.m. Then the next day I'd start all over again. It was exhausting. I didn't, I didn't even know how I had the energy to do all of this stuff. I really did my best to make quality time with my kids every single day and also spend time with them on the weekends just so that I could get to know them. They knew who I was. My wife, she was okay because as long as cash was flowing, everything was good. We're no longer married. Uh, <laughs> but the big problem here was that every time I went to the doctor, the doctor gave me more bad news. And it got worse every single time I went, but I still decided to go. I guess I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> Finally, he tells me, Abel, if we don't make significant changes in your lifestyle, you've got maybe 10 more years to live and you'll be dead. So I did what any normal, average human would do in this circumstance, getting that kind of news. I got rid of my car. That's chip. <laughs> the very next day, I put my leg over a bike and I rode my first mile I had ridden in over a decade. It was awesome. Every day, I'd ride my bike to work, and it was about two and a half miles to the office, two and a half miles home. It was pretty obvious to me when I started to ride with the weight of my laptop and my clothes and the towel and me, uh, it was definitely uphill going to work and downhill coming home from work. Um, but there was a big problem with this because I started to have blowouts in my back tire all the time. One week I had four in one stinking week. I got so frustrated, I took my bike to the bike shop and I'm like, come on guys, help me out here, I'm struggling. And I'm just so tired of having to stop and fix tires while I'm trying to get to work. And the technician looks at the bike he looks at me and he's like, I know what the problem is. There's a weight distribution problem. I'm like, are you calling me fat? And he's like, no, 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 I would never say something like that. I'm so impressed that even after all these flat tires, you continue to get on your bike. I want to make this right for you. And so he got a reinforced tire and a new rim for the back tire. And I was back in business. So problem one was solved. Next, to solve problem two. I started riding all over the city. It was great, it was fantastic. I could get from one end to the other and back and not die. Um, and uh, it was, uh, but the, the problem I had to figure out was, when I arrived somewhere, what was the appropriate amount of stench? <laughs> oh. Now, my good friends, they were okay with me showing up stinky. But I had to figure out like if I had a doctor's appointment or if I had a business meeting, like what was I supposed to do? So I, the mental gymnastics that I'd have to go through in order to figure out how exactly I was going to get there on time with the appropriate level of steam was just a lot of work. And I found that my friends and family, they're all okay with it. They just didn't care. They just wanted to see me. It was fantastic. And business meetings, I would just hop into Uber or that just took care of itself. So that problem eventually was figured out. The last challenge to figure out was there's obvious safety issues when you're on a bike all the time. And so I had to figure that piece out. Now, thankfully, Austin is an extremely bike-friendly city. There's bike lanes all over the place. And hopefully you guys are looking out for them because I know I do. I'm very mindful of them today. And, uh, you know, at first, when I was first on my bike, there was a lot of stupid things I would just do myself. Like I would just get tired and I'd try and take short and cuts home. And there was this one day that this sign just jumped in the middle of my path and I crashed into it and I went flying off the bike. As I'm laying there on the ground looking out at the sign, I, I see that it reads, no parking. I didn't want to park there. That wasn't the idea. But I got back on, got myself home. There was other moments where I was a little scared for my life, but there was 
none more scary than, than this one, where I was just cruising through town, having a great day. It was a beautiful, sunny afternoon. And uh, I was on this bike path that crosses a road not too far from here. And there was a pedestrian crosswalk there, but there's no signs. There's no other signs there, but there's no lights. So people don't have to stop when they're crossing this, this path. And as I'm coming up to it, I'm slowing down a little bit. But I look off to the left, it's clear. Look to the right. And in my view, it was completely clear. I saw a car in the middle lane turning left. What I didn't see was the car behind it because my view was obstructed. So I start cruising through this intersection without seeing this car until finally I locked eyes with Bobby, Chad, and the driver. <laughs> and we all slam on the brakes at the same time. He skids off to the right slightly. I contort my bike and my body, and somehow we barely dodged each other. I was shaking. I was so in shock because it was so incredibly close. And I felt extremely lucky that I wasn't injured. And I started to cruise off. I knew there was a coffee shop nearby. I needed to go and calm myself down. And I realized that I had a pool of warm blood filling a sock because I had stabbed my leg with the front gear on my bike. But I was thankful that that was the only injury that I had that day. When I got, finally called myself down, I sent my kids a text message just reminding them how much I loved them. Uh, so as I think about this amazing two-year journey on the bike, I lost about 70 pounds. Yes, I put a few more on since then. I have a car again. It sucks. No, it. It's sick. But I rode through storms. I rode through excessive heat. I rode through heavy winds and cold air. And I would do it all over again because it was amazing. What I didn't realize, though, was that doctor, not only did he scare the living daylights out of me, but he also got me to start living my life. Thank you.